Imagine it's the 15th century and you are a minister in the king's court when all of a sudden, one day, you get the news that all the king's generals are dead and you've just been appointed as the head of the king's army. Your task? To win an impossible war that's already at the gates. With no action plan, barely any soldiers or weapons and the whole kingdom running around like headless chickens. That, in a nutshell, is the idea behind the Phoenix Project. Except that the kingdom is an auto parts company and the impossible war is a business initiative the company needs to launch to save itself from utter failure. In today's video, we're going to review the Phoenix Project in detail and explain why you should add it to your reading list. The Phoenix Project came out in 2013 and took the IT world by storm. So much so that even 10 years on, it continues to shape the field and is widely regarded by DevOps and IT professionals around the world as one of the best books in IT. This is the second part of our video series where we cover must-read books for DevOps professionals. And if you haven't watched the first part, uh, you can do it by clicking on the link above. So let's just um, jump right in. The full title of this book is The Phoenix Project, a novel about IT DevOps and helping your business win. And it's written by three incredible minds behind the DevOps movement, Gene Kim, Kevin Baer, and George Spafford. And some of you may already be aware of them. They are award-winning professionals with decades of experience in mentoring organizations to transform their IT workflows and operations. But before I dive into this story, I wanna tell you three reasons why I love uh, The Phoenix Project and why I'm sure you will uh, enjoy it too. Number one, it's written in a novel format. This is very rare for a DevOps or IT book and that's exactly what makes it so easy to read. Instead of simply listing out concepts in a dry manner, it draws you into a compelling story and takes you on a journey alongside the protagonist Bill and his adventures. Number two, it brings together many complex concepts to help us understand how they are connected and can be applied together in real world settings. And instead of uh, explaining each idea in isolation, it shows us how to actually integrate them in a practical setting. And three, it has very relatable characters. From Brent, who is everyone's Mr. Fix-It, to Sarah, who loves pulling others down, they all sound like the people you and I have worked with. They get emotionally invested in the story as it progresses. Now, the story is written around Bill Palmer, who is the director of mid-range operations at Parts Unlimited a failing auto parts manufacturing giant that has definitely seen better days. Parts Unlimited was an undisputed leader in its space. However, its stock prices are nose diving and it has failed to roll out a crucial business initiative called the Phoenix Project for years. They've been making the headlines for all the wrong reasons. They're bleeding money and are laying off people left, right and center. And in the middle of all of this mess, Bill is suddenly thrust into the eye of the storm by being promoted as the vice president of IT operations. Now the CEO gives him the impossible task to launch the Phoenix project within weeks, warning him that if it doesn't roll out in time, the company will be split up and its entire IT operations will be outsourced. Now from the first day in his new role, Bill is thrown into the fire. He discovers that his teams are overworked and understaffed with no systems or processes or coordination in place. And everything is urgent, everything is last minute, and everyone is busy putting out fires instead of doing real work. And to make things worse, the deployment date of the Phoenix project has been fixed with no planning or discussion with all the departments. Sound familiar? I'm sure that many of you will relate to the way the book describes corporate chaos, politics, bloodbath meetings, and the fights between different departments. But just as Bill starts to think this is a losing battle, he has a chance meeting with Dr. Eric Reed, a mysterious figure on the company's board. Now that's the turning point of the story. Like Master Shifu in Kung Fu Panda, Eric doesn't tell him how to fix the mess, but rather helps him discover hidden patterns in the chaos and sends him on his own journey of asking the right questions. Now throughout the story, Eric reappears at critical junctures to introduce Bill to concepts that eventually help him uncover and fix the issues uh, that's plaguing the company. Now to get him started, his first question to Bill is, what are the four types of work that IT does? The question stumped Bill at first, but over the course of the story, Bill began to realize what they are. The first type of work is business projects. 
Simply put, these are the projects that directly affect the company's business goals. They generate revenue and deliver value to customers. The second is internal projects. These are smaller tasks that happen on a regular basis to keep the company functioning like upgrades, security patches, and maintenance. And since most of this work is not tracked centrally, it ends up being invisible work and overcommitted IT ends up becoming a bottleneck for many departments. The third type is changes. This work is ideally tracked in a ticketing process and is the result of the first two types of work like version upgrades and bug fixes. And the fourth and the most dangerous type of work is unplanned work. Unplanned work is the kryptonite of productivity and covers all the operational issues that are mostly caused by the first three types of work and drains the time and energy that should ideally be used for planning work commitments. Now, understanding this concept marks a turning point in Bill's journey as he starts to uncover ways to deal with the challenges around each type of work. Another important concept that is explained really well in the book is the theory of constraints and the work in progress. To put it simply, the theory of constraints is the concept that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link or a project is only as efficient as its greatest bottleneck. In this story, we see how one brilliant employee, Brent, ends up being the company's bottleneck. Nothing finishes without Brent and he's constantly pulled in a million different directions to fix issues. And as a result, a lot of the company's important work in progress tasks end up piling around him. Now, I'm sure you know at least one person in your team who is like Brent, that guy that everyone is dependent upon and where all the work is stuck at. And understanding this helps Bill and his team divert these last minute tasks to other engineers, freeing up Brent to work only on the Phoenix project. To deal with the excess work in progress, Bill and his team also decide to put another important concept into action by using Kanban boards. Kanban boards are visual tools that help manage the workflow of a project. On a Kanban board, tasks can be divided into categories such as to do, in progress, and done. And this helps team quickly track the progress of their projects so they can see where there are bottlenecks or delays. And it also shows which tasks have been completed and which task still needs to be done. Well, you know, super basic stuff if you think of it in today's world. With Kanban boards, we find out the endless number of commitments the IT team had all this while, which no one kept a track of. It was all invisible work with no prioritization. By understanding these concepts over the course of the story, Bill is able to see the big picture and realize how IT is crucial to the smooth operations part of every single department. And if IT fails, the business fails. With this realization, he manages to turn the company's culture around and eventually help the Phoenix rise from the ashes of its challenges to a successful deployment. With an engrossing storyline and real-world situations, the Phoenix project expertly underlines the key principles that guide the entire philosophy behind DevOps. The three ways. The first way is all about creating a continuous, smooth, and fast flow of work from left to right that goes from development, IT operations, and finally to the customer. It helps us understand the importance of processes, of doing tasks in small batches and doing them well and constantly optimizing work to meet global goals. If the first way talks about the left to right flow of work, the second way shows us the importance of quick feedback from right to left. It explains how we should amplify feedback loops at every stage to prevent problems from being passed on and avoid double work by fixing things at the source, which is often upstream in our process. And the third and the final way shows how important it is to have a work culture that encourages experimentation, learns from its mistakes, and understands the repetition and practice are crucial to being ahead of the game. By mastering the three ways, you will leapfrog ahead of your competition and win your business goals by constantly creating value for your customers. So I highly recommend this book to not just DevOps and IT professionals as a powerful learning tool, but for anyone who wants to understand the inner workings of their IT department. It does a great job of explaining the key concepts of DevOps in a simple manner and shows what makes an agile and well-oiled IT organization. Well, if you enjoyed this review, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and drop a comment to let us know your thoughts on our video and, and the book. Keep an eye out for our upcoming videos because we will be sharing exciting reviews on the Unicorn Project, the DevOps Handbook, the Effective DevOps, and lots more in the coming weeks. Well, I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, goodbye.